Hello there. Welcome to Joe Fernandez's Minecraft Vanilla Tutorial Series. Today's episode, our third installment of this series, is based upon shelters, farming, and breeding. Um, first on the list for us to learn is the shelter. We use these, these fancy things right here, to protect ourselves from the nighttime monsters, to store all our goods when we're mining, from when we're mining, sorry, and to brag about it to our friends. We got fancy things right here and things like that. You know, just nice, nice, nice buildings. And we can brag about them to our friends. Um, there are many types of shelters that we can study. You know, of course, we've got the cave. That that's, would be underground, like this one. Okay. We've got the lean-to, just like this. No real walls, just a shelter. Just a basic shelter that you just have to keep stuff in. you got the house, house kind of thing. And then there's the castle, which I haven't built because, well, it takes quite a long time to do... And I don't really want to have to spend hours upon hours upon hours building a castle to show you for five minutes. But I guess to keep things simple and convenient, today we're just going to look into how to make the standalone home, like you see here. These types of shelters, if I walk around it, you'll see that it's very basic. Oh, two little extra blocks I didn't remember having. Um, these types, sorry. These types of shelters are literally built just to suit our needs. They're nothing fancy. They're in a basic shape, so a square, a rectangle, um, if you're really good at Minecraft, a circle, if you can somehow make it work. And they can be placed all over the world, wherever we find most convenient. So if we wanted to build in the desert, we could build in the desert. If we wanted to build underground, we could build underground. But for me, I personally prefer the plains biome, as I'm sure 90,000% of all Minecrafters do. So let's go on inside and see what's going on here. So. You know, the way our shelter is designed, as you can see here, if you remember my first episode, which I think came out today, maybe tomorrow, I'm not sure. The first episode um, has this exact layout in it, a 9x9 with just a bunch of stuff in it. Um, so yeah, the way our shelter is designed will allow us the ability to expand should we desire to, the ability to function ergonomically, and we'll keep track of the goods we found out in the wilderness, like this. You know, we got more stuff, 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 input stuff, kind of thing. Oh, I've got items in here. Let's get it out. All right, perfect. Now, before I go any farther, you know, about designing and how houses should work, I just want to make one item for you guys because we haven't made this yet in the tutorial series, and I think you should learn it. And I'm guessing you can already look and see what it is. We've got a bed here, so we're gonna make a bed. We're gonna go up to this crafting table, and we're gonna just make a bed. So we need to take three birch wood planks or three wooden planks at any kind, and then three pieces of wool that we're going to lay on top of. And you can see that we've got ourselves a bed here, and it looks pretty much like a bed in the crafting table. Awesome. So now we've got another bed. Okay, now we're going to go back to design. Now, um, a well-designed shelter kind of thing for our Minecraft life should have kind of three fundamentals that you base everything off of, and five basic work areas or rooms. If you want to make rooms, that's nice. The three fundamentals we should be focusing on um, are sustainable food sources. So we want something like that nearby at all times, or we want some sort of animal farm that we can, you know, feed every every animal, get enough animals back to kill all the animals to get enough food to kind of fill up a hot bar. Eight steaks is really hard to find if you're hunting out cows, and you don't want to go hunting every time you need food. You want a sustainable food source right here, right at home. We need space to expand into. So if you look around me, I've got a huge plain biome. And if I wanted to build out this way, well, guess what? I could build out this way. If I wanted to build out front of my house and I wanted to build a bridge over this little ravine here, I could do it if I wanted to. Even if I wanted to go over that mountain, I don't have to worry about building anything. I can literally just put items down and get ready. I don't have to build a platform. I don't have to worry about structure. And I don't have to worry about my OCD going crazy. And another, another thing that we should try and keep common about all of our kind of designs is... We need some sort of natural light, and I know that some people might prefer to build in caves or underground, but I really recommend you build it on the surface where you can put skylights in. Now, I don't usually use this kind of structure for the skylight. I did it for simplicity's sake. But uh, some sort of natural light to, to work in. I don't need any sort of torches in here to have it function or anything. So, if we take these kind of fundamentals and apply them in any combination with any shelter type, if we took those fundamentals, as you can see here, and I put it in here, you know, I've got space to build out into, I've got natural light, and I've got a sustainable food source right there. This shelter, albeit simple, 
would function perfectly. We wouldn't need anything. We'd go to sleep. We could wake up and be completely fine. Now, would we be protected from monsters? Probably not. But that's where this next part comes into. The five work areas or rooms that I was about to talk about um, are, are literally to keep you safe and to keep everything working. Um, they allow you to kind of stay alive for longer periods of time, and they really help you with prospering with your mining and your and your resource development and all that kind of fancy schnazraj. So each home should at least have one bed in a secure sleeping area. So as you can probably tell, this isn't a secure sleeping area, and that's where that point comes in. So we wouldn't want to really sleep in this place, even though it would fu it would function as a as a shelter under my own definition. It really wouldn't help you stay alive. This, however is a secure sleeping area. I've got nice stone between me and the monsters, and I've got enough space that if a monster's standing here, I could still go to bed. Um, each home should also have a crafting area, as you can see. I've got a, I mean, a crafting table doesn't warrant a crafting area. I mean an area of the house that you, you know in the back of your head you can just walk to. So if I open this chest and I say I need some sort of item to craft, to grab it out, I know that if I just turn around and I go here, from memory, I'll always be used to going over here, no matter what I do. I don't have to worry about anything, I can just go right to the crafting table. I know it's cheesy, but there are mods that add extra tables, which make things far more convenient. Alright, now, another thing we need is a, is a smelting area. and I mean, a smelting area, you could have one furnace, you could have 30 furnaces, it doesn't matter. Okay? Um, I tend to have a furnace wall. Now, this is a very basic home, so I don't have anything in it just yet. But you need a f smelting area. If you're going to go mining in vanilla Minecraft, and you come up here and you expect to get all your ores smelted it with one furnace, you are sadly mistaken. You're going to be sitting at this furnace for hours. No, you need to get yourself a nice furnace wall, probably all along this seven, by, seven long wall, and fill it to the roof, and just fill it with coal, and put your items in. Um, another area that you should have in your homes, which is also another thing, is a, some sort of storage. This is very basic, only four storage, four ch chests, sorry. Only four chests you know, that's just not enough to maintain everything that you need to kind of store. I mean, this would fill up after one mining trip with cobblestone. It's just not enough. Um, it looks to be getting nighttime here. Let's go to sleep real quick. Alright. Now, we, we wouldn't have enough storage at all for our, all the things we need. We need an area for miscellaneous junk, like my items down here. We need an area for building materials, like cobblestone. We need an area for rare stuff. Now, of course, this would be plenty of room for my rare items. I'm never going to fill this with diamonds, not in my lifetime. But this would fill up ten times the amount it has, ten times more than that with cobblestone throughout my time of playing on Minecraft. If you spent one day playing Minecraft straight mining, 24 hours, you could probably fill this entire area, the chests, filled with chests. It's, it's just ridiculous. Another thing that we should kind of focus on is having a mine nearby. Now, I don't have a mine in this house specifically, but if you just look, I mean, if you just look down here, you can just be like, well, damn, we've got a mine right here. I mean, you can see some coal, you got a little bit of copper, iron, tin, some more coal. I mean, you don't really need to go far because we have a ravine here. But you do need a mine, and we'll get into that in the as you can probably see, there's a little structure over there, and we're going to actually build a house in this episode to show you all the fundamentals and basic design concepts that we need to add into, just in this episode. And the final thing that we should kind of have in our design process is a sustainable farmer food source, and that's right there, obviously. So we don't really need to worry about it, but if you have an area that you can just put animals in and slaughter them and feed them, then I would really recommend that over everything. So if we take these fundamentals and add the five rooms as stated before and we go over here, we construct efficient and beautiful homes. And I'm going to show you that right now. So we're going to come over here and we're going to grab some items out of this chest. So we're going to grab some wood. i throw these in there. We're going to grab some furnaces and chests, uh, some beds. Uh, we don't need that just yet. So let's put those up there. Pull these back down. All right. Perfect. That. So if we go over here, we see that, oh, I better, better grab a shovel, sorry. We can see that we've got like a basic shape, let's go into creative mode. Um, slash game mode 1. 
Okay, I think that's a creative one, yeah. So if we stand up here, we can see that we've got a basic shape of a house. And now, this is very simple. I did this in about five minutes. I just chose a random shape, and I went with it. Um, this shape right here allows us to have all the rooms that I've stated before, a bedroom, a smelting area, a storage room, and a mine, all in one. As well as the crafting area, obviously. So if we go down here and we say, well, I need a bedroom. Well, let's take our shovel and let's designate a bedroom. Oh, that creative one. I don't need that. Let's let's designate it with the light colored birch wood. Okay. So if we take our beds. Let's place our beds down. Place our chests down. Bam. We've got all of a sudden our, our we've got a bedroom that's designated as a sleeping area. We can put torches on the outside of this, and no monsters would spawn. And it's in a safe area. It's surrounded by cobblestone. So what else? What we else? Uh, what we also need is some sort of crafting area, and I think we're going to designate that with the darker wood. Don't ask me why I keep going back to the shovel. I don't need to. It's just bad habits. So we take our crafting area, give it a dark wood touch. Sounds creepy. Just fill it in here. Oh, that's not good. Alright, there we go. We have a dark wood area that we can just fill with check with uh, furnaces. Oh, don't want that one there. Bam! We got ourselves a furnace area. Do I need a crafting table? Yep. All right, so we grab ourselves a crafting table. We also need a, some sort of crafting area, and since it's already in the dark area, I decided, hey, why not just add these here? Just like that. Fancy. Two crafting areas. Now, if we go out here and we say, well, we don't have any storage. I mean, we got these two, but we want a legitimate storage area. Let's break this up, and uh, congratulations to all of those of you who knew how this layout was going to work out. Uh, I mean, that means you just understand the fundamentals of design far better than I do, at least. This is all on the spot, kind of freaking out. So we've got ourselves a nice designated storage area, so we just place the chest down, just like so, and all of a sudden, if we zoom out, you can see that this house took shape in, what, 10 minutes? I mean, I'm using creative mode, but this is the fastest and most efficient way to design your home. And look, we've got a mine at the back here. We don't have to worry about going any farther. We can just keep on digging straight down. Just like that. And look, we already found some coal. Perfect. And a little cave. Cool. So now that we understand that we need sustainable food, space to expand into, natural light to allow a bright working area, and that each home should have at least one bed and a secure sleeping area, a crafting and smelting area, a storage facility, a mine nearby, and sustainable farm food, we can take this and we can apply it to any kind of house you want to do. So go off in your own little worlds and do that. But this episode isn't over, folks. We're not even close to done this yet. This episode is about more than just building your home. We want an area that can survive and thrive. So I have decided to show you how to build the perfect farm. This can be any size any shape, I mean really you can do whatever you want, but if you want the most efficient way just follow these instructions. So I've got one um, water block here. Now you'll notice I've got a farm in a square shape and you're going to say well that's cliche, why don't we just build everything square in Minecraft. And to be quite honest if you're hoping for efficiency you could do that. But I know a lot of people out there like to do their own thing and I respect that as well. So if we take a one block and we go four away from it we have the perfect distance from the main block for the water to be to water, for the water to fertilize the land. Now it's not fair because I've got a block here, but if I were to click this block here, it would not go fertile if I was over there. So let's go over here and show you. So one, two, three, four away from the water. This fifth one will not go fertile. In fact, it'll go back to dirt in a matter of seconds. And and this will be able to prove it to you. So while we're doing that, I'm going to go over here and show you. So. Everyone knows that to farm, you just right click with the wooden, with any kind of hoe in your hand, and it fertilizes the land. Now we can take some seeds, right click them into, into the spot, and we've got ourselves um, a farm. So if we take this and we go four ways, so one, two, three, four, we'll have the perfect mining size. And again, I'm going to go five just to show you. So let's go over here and do it again. Two, three, four, five. And now we're going to be able to show you with that one. And the funny thing is, is this, you know, you think, oh, perfect, I can go four out and four out. But if you go four diagonally, so one, two, three, four, it will still work. And you'll be able to draw a line here and see that it actually connects itself to the other parts. So that's where this, this farm design comes from. 
which allows you to have a 9x9 nine nine farm. <laughs> and that's a pretty big coincidence considering this house over here is a 9x9. Nine nine. And for the record, I don't use 9x9s, nine um, and I don't try to copy them. I only use them at the start of all series, just kind of as an efficient way to build things. So let's go see. Oh, look at this. Look at that. Yeah, I proved it to you, didn't I? Mm-hmm. You can't build any more than four away from a water block. And you can see I've actually done this efficiently enough that I could have a farm here and connect it to this one. I've only to use two water blocks. So if you want to build a farm, you know, and by all means go ahead and do this. Along the water edge, I mean, you can. But the most efficient way to do it is on land. Just use one block and you get t tons of space. I don't know what the ratio would be, but I would assume it's at least double the amount of farmland. So, now that we know how to farm, let's take some of this wheat. So let's change our game mode. Let's take, uh, do we want wheat or do we want carrots? Let's, let's get, actually let's get some carrots. Carrot. So let's get two carrots. Nice. So let's go back in. And let's go over these pigs over here. Now, these pigs have been here the whole time, and, and you really don't need to worry about making a farm if you've got pigs nearby. But if we take these these pigs and we say, well, we need more pigs, we need baby pigs, how do we make pigs have more pigs? Well, if we pull these carrots out, all of a sudden these pigs go crazy. And pigs use carrots, chickens use seeds, and all other animals use wheat. So we take these carrots, and we're going to call this one Daddy Pig, this one Mommy Pig. If we say, hey Daddy Pig, you want a carrot? Bam, all of a sudden he gets hearts on him. What the heck? Bam. Oh my goodness, they're both hearting. Wait a second, what's going on here? Oh my goodness, there's a baby pig. Look at how cute that little bugger is. Look at how big his head is, that's awesome. But now that we've got another pig, we can say, hey, one of you can die. So let's go over the Daddy Pig and beat him. Oh, wait, didn't I say your... Oh no, this is... Oh. Uh, I remember saying in the last episode, oh, I shouldn't beat animals to death. Hey, come here, daddy pig. Yeah, I'm gonna get you. You better run. Run, Mr. Pig. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, yeah, this is awful. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah, anyway, now that we know how to breed, breed animals, so we can do this with all types of animals, and it's just about to go to the nighttime, we can make baby animals, and they're so cute. I mean, look at that. I wish I had more carrots. I could give that little baby pig a carrot. So yeah. Um, you know, we've got our home, we've got our chest, we've got our crafting tables, we've got our design areas. We know how to build a house now. You know the basics, and I'm not going to say them again because, you know, it's probably getting on your nerves. You know how to make animals mate, and you can do it with all the animals, you know how to make a perfect farm. So congratulations, you've made it through episode 3. Stay tuned, however. Um, next episode, we're going to delve into the mining techniques and the most efficient mine designs. So at the bottom of this mine that I'm going to dig up between <coughs> this episode and next, we will have a new mine. Um, enjoy, guys.